Hi, my name is Bethany. I'm the girl behind Well Loved Knits, and as promised, we are doing a knitting podcast today. In this video, I'm going to give a little bit of a progress update on some of the things that I'm working on, as well as some things that I've finished. Um, and then I'll round it out with some yarn acquisitions because even though I really didn't mean to, I somehow have a lot of new yarn to share <laughs> um, that, you know, I think we can all relate when it just comes out of nowhere and you didn't really, you didn't realize that <laughs> you had got so many things. So I'm really excited to share all of that with you. Um, but first I want to share the thing that I'm wearing. This is, thank goodness it's October. I can finally wear my knits again. And this is the North Sweater by Hip Knit Shop. And I made it earlier this year, actually. I made it in February, March timeframe. And it was a new construction for me. This is a bottom up sweater, working uh, decreases along the arms and then joining, knitting the sleeves and joining those and then finally finishing up the collar. Very new to me technique. I had never done that before. I think I managed to do an okay job. Um, I did make some mistakes on the de the decreases, but I think I put them in the back of the sweater. So you might not be able to see, maybe it's this one. There's one that's just like, my tension was off, I think. And so it's like a really loose stitch. I think it's there, right there. I can't really see. Um, but yeah, so I love the color. It's knit with, uh, hip wool in either chestnut or hazelnut, uh, gingerbread, gingerbread. And then I think the mohair that I used is chestnut. And it, it's just like, there are just a little different shades of brown. So it gives like some kind of dimension, I think, to the wool. It's very fuzzy, very warm, very soft, very soft and I really love it. Also very oversized, not something that I actually intended. <laughs> um, so I actually knit a size medium, which I don't know why I'm surprised because usually I knit size small and it's very nice and oversized. So I think the design in of itself is just meant to be an oversized knit. And this one, I'm really happy that I actually did knit a size medium because it is just so big, so cozy, so perfect for this weather because Yesterday was the first day of October, so today's the second. And um, yeah, the weather, just fantastic. <laughs> um, very fall, I can see the leaves changing outside. I would really recommend this knit. I do think that the instructions were a little complicated um, or incomplete. I remember that being one of my biggest takeaways, um, just the way that it was written. I feel like for a beginner might not work out so well. And then also I've heard a lot of feedback from you all about uh, Hip Knit Shop in that it's very difficult to get the yarn from them. And I've experienced that as well. It's a longer wait time if you order uh, their yarn. It takes a while to get in, but I do think it's really worth it. So, so yeah, let's get into the knits that we have here. Um, things that I've been working on. I have a whole pile of knits right here that I've been working on very diligently, one of which is finished, and yet I still haven't managed to sew in the ends. I guess that's just how I am. <laughs> uh, I haven't finished weaving in the end, so it's the same as what you saw last week, but uh, here is my finished seamless mock neck sweater, which I just wanna say thank you all so much for the love on this piece. It was a little overwhelming. I was very um, excited that you all really love the construction of this sweater as well as look, the color, um, the design in general. I'm just really happy that it was very well received. You should have seen last week the videos of me wearing this sweater, so I'm not gonna put it on now, but um, it's a nice oversized fit. This one I also knit in medium, so kind of a similar ease as this sweater here. This one is nice and oversized, has a mock neck instead of this like kind of turtleneck thing here. I don't know why I'm comparing the two, but basically this has a mock neck knit in two by two rib, and then it's a raglan style where we make increases along the two sides of the collar to create shoulder seams, and then finish knitting the body and picking up the sleeves in the round and finishing those off with two by two rib. So 
I'm really happy with the construction of this piece. I won't go into too many details because I did make an entire video about it, about the behind the scenes process. The only thing that I have left to do now is uh, weave in those ends and add in a tag, which I'll get to a little bit later. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with it. Love the color and I am planning on making another one. So more on that soon, but yeah, as a finished piece, this took me about two weeks to make. Um, and at that time I was also, you know, trying to figure out the design. So I did have to frog a little bit, um, especially when it came to the increases, it was a real trial and error there. Um, I was really, I didn't have calculations beforehand. I mean, I knew what I wanted the sweater to look like, but I didn't have like, I didn't pre-calculate, okay, for my size, potentially this would be the strict amount of uh, stitches, which in hindsight might have worked a lot better and I might start working that way. But for me, I was just kind of doing trial and error and seeing, okay, this is what would fit uh, best. So then I ended up doing too many increases along the seams at first, which would have made a super oversized sweater, which I'm happy that this is oversized, but not that much. And I actually had to frog back, like I wanna say, my original increases were out to here. So even further, like on the, sh uh, what the sleeve actually ended up being like. So I had to frog a little bit there. But even still, I think it's a quick knit. I currently uh, have testers going for this. So thank you all so much for applying to test knit this sweater. Uh, I have contacted all of the testers. I received so many applications and I'm really, really thankful for that. I think uh, it was mind blowing how much many of you were interested. So really, really thankful. I'm really sorry if I couldn't uh, get to you, if I didn't contact you to test this time. There's certainly next time for sure. Um, I hope I have a lot of designs in mind, so I'm hoping that I will be able to increase the amount of patterns that I can release and therefore I'll have more opportunities for you to test knit. Um, so yes, testers have been contacted. They have confirmed that they are still willing to test and I estimate that this pattern will be ready for release mid-November. So I want to give them plenty of time. I don't want to rush, especially because I have such a wide range of sizes and some might take longer than others. So just to give them enough time, I don't want anyone to get injured while knitting this piece. So neighbors. <laughs> so I don't want anyone to get injured while knitting this piece. So plenty of time, protect your wrists. And I'm very excited for this piece to finally be released. Yeah. I don't know where to put it. Okay, I guess I'll put them on the floor. Uh, yes, so the next piece that you've seen, of course, is my V-neck sweater, which has gone on hold. I will say that I have quite a few whips that are, you know, just in pause mode. Um, and that's really because mentally, I don't think I can handle more than one work in progress at a time. I want to be able to, but the reality is I'm just kind of like narrow minded and narrow focused in that I have like, I want to finish this. I need to finish. I will do everything to finish the sweater that I'm working on that I'm very inspired by. So that seamless mock neck sweater, I was definitely very inspired by. So I think that kind of took over my mental capacity. And that was all I really wanted to work on. I was very energized by it. And I love that. That's like the best part of knitting when you're really energized. At the same time though, this was something that I was also very energized by at the very, a couple weeks ago. And this is the V-neck sweater that I'm slowly working on. Um, just for fun. I don't really know if I'm gonna make a pattern out of it, to be honest. We'll see. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's just a, you know, V-neck with a very thick two by two rib. I'm very obsessed with two by two rib these days. Um, and this is where I showed how to knit a V-neck in a two by two rib. And I think it turned out really nice. I'm very happy with how it looks. Um, the thickness and the I like the mitered center, the mitered V. I think that's what it's called. And it looks really nice, especially with this yarn. So this is my Noro Garden Silk Sock Yarn. 
in the color way 01. And I think it's very beautiful. I really like this thick rib at the bottom. Um, I was actually, it's, I mentioned last week that I have a really hard time gauging mentally like, okay, how much length do I need for the sweater? I'm always very impatient in that way with the body. Um, the sleeves, I have no problem. I don't, I'm not someone that has like problem with sleeve island kind of thing. Although maybe this, the state of this actually says something otherwise. But um, with the body, I have a hard time because it's so much wider that it takes a lot more time to knit. And so I think mentally, because I feel like I've been knitting for so long, then I'm like, okay, well, I think the, the sweater's done now <laughs> kind of thing. So on this one, I will say I switched to the rib a little too early. And I tried to make up for that by just having a really thick bottom rib, which I love. But even still, um, this sweater just works with high-waisted jeans. So I kind of wish it were a little longer. So I think also the reason that this piece is a bit on hold is because I'm just not sure if I want to go back and do that properly. Um, and also I'm really wondering what I want with this piece. I keep going back and forth and I would really love your opinion if you have one <laughs> in the comments. What should I do with the sleeve? Because um, at first I was thinking I would do like a short sleeve and obviously they're gonna be very wide sleeves. Look at that inset uh, sleeve right here. Um, but now I'm thinking like very wide long sleeves, but then I'm not sure I can get away with it with the amount of yarn that I have. So I think I only have one skein left of the yarn. I'd have to look. Um, so I think I only have one skein left, which would be probably better for short sleeves. I mean, the, the skein goes a really long way. Um, the reason that I don't know how much I have exactly is I was really picking and choosing because I'm very particular with how this yarn turns out. I think it's beautiful, but there are some parts of the yarn that feel really muddy in comparison to others. Like, I think this is a good example. This yellow right here is not exactly my favorite, I feel like there's just too much brown in it too. So if it's just that, uh, it looks a little, I want more of the pinks and the purples and the, and the blues, like this down here, this is beautiful. So I want more of that, which is why I've been like kind of picking and choosing from the skein. So that's why I'm not 100% sure how much yarn I have left. Um, so I could just do an arm, two little bands. I could just do two little bands here and then make this a vest and kind of call it a day, which I also might do. I don't know. I think that's why I just need to let this sit for a little bit longer, figure out what I want. Definitely let me know in the comments what you guys think because I would love your opinion. I think we, we kind of need to figure this out together. <laughs> so those are the two garments that I've kind of been working on um, recently that you've already seen before. And uh, that's my progress there. Another progress update on something that I've been working on in the past um, are these, is the sock, um, ooh, my everyday sock that I was working on during my vacation, which last time I showed you just one sock, I still only have one sock and I didn't really get very far. On the second one, I think this is still the same progress that I've had before. Again, just because I haven't really been um, needing this really mobile project. I was really working on this when I was traveling. It was a really nice project to take around with me, but since I'm not really uh, traveling at the moment, not really something that I've been gravitating towards. However, I did, and this is an acquisition type, but you know, still, it's still related. I got sock blockers, <laughs> which I'm really excited about. These are really cute. Um, I got them from some Etsy shop and I'll link those in the description. It has a little hydrangea on it, which I really love. It's one of my favorite, it's not my favorite flower, but I love hydrangea bushes. I have a neighbor, somewhere in the neighborhood, um, there's this house that's just completely uh, covered by hydrangeas in the summertime. I'll insert a picture if I have one uh, and it's just so beautiful. So. This is exactly what I wanted on my sock blocker. And then I even got to personalize it and uh, put my well-loved knits there. 
yeah, I'm a size 39 EU, so I have pretty big feet. <laughs> and luckily, I was able to test it out with this one. I, I since took it off, but I was really worried that this was going to be huge. But it worked really well, and I actually can tell a difference after uh, letting it block on the sock blocker. I definitely can tell a difference with how the sock is laying. Um, I think in my short rows, it always tends to pucker up there. And I feel like the block, the sock blocker definitely helped kind of tame that down. Um, and then this is my sock that's knit with it's by Woolly Mammoth Fiber Co, but I can't remember the colorway. If I remember it, I will put it on the screen somewhere. But yeah, it's a really lovely color. And here is the second sock. So I really need to learn how to do two socks at once so I stop having this problem um, because I knit one sock and then I just let the other one go. And then when I actually finally get the, the inspiration to do it, something goes wrong. Like last time I told you that the dog ate the sock. So well-intentioned, but something is gonna go wrong. I really hope that's not the case for this sock, but uh, we will see. Um, but yeah, very happy with this acquisition of the sock blockers. So I have two. So if I ever get around to learning how to knit two at a time, I will be able to block them both at the same time, but I had to test it out. So uh, yeah, really happy with these, really recommend them. Um, I don't have blocking mats or anything like that, but I think these are very va valuable and I would recommend them. Yeah, and I would recommend the Etsy shop. So I'll leave that link for that. Okay, you guys. Um, so more works in progress, more that are active on the needles now because um, I'm really shifting my focus to really chunky uh, knits. So which one do I wanna share? Probably the one that I have more progress on. So this one right here is something I've been actively working on now that I've cast off the seamless mock neck sweater. Here, let me try and slide my stitches a little bit so that you can see more of it in full. My cable is not long enough, so I can't really get an idea of how wide it is, how long it is, but here is where I'm at right now. I'm knitting this on eight millimeter needles, so nice and thick and quick progress because I only cast this on a couple of days ago uh, and I was working in two by two rib at the bottom with much smaller needles which is why there's like so much gather here. I actually really love that. Um, I think the needle size that I was working with was five and a half and you can see that it creates with such a contrast in needle size, it creates like really gathered uh, stitches almost, which I really love. Um, I'm really liking it. This is a cardigan, obviously, because I'm working back and forth in one long, well, I guess that's not very obvious. I guess I could have just been working in multiple panels, but this will be a cardigan. And I just need to work a couple more centimeters before I can split off for the, the two front panels and one back panel and make like the arm openings. So I think I don't have my stitch markers on yet, but I think it would be like right about here. And then I would work the front and the back separately and then join back together or stitch it together. I don't know, I need to read the pattern. So this is actually going to be uh, something in partnership with Bellish, which is an app that I've worked with before. Um, so I'll have a whole video that's dedicated to this uh, sweater cardigan um, working with the app. So yeah, I'm really excited with how it's looking so far. And I'm using um, We Are Knitters Petite Wool in Forest Green. I think acquisitions and, uh, you know, works in progress and everything, this is going to be kind of mixed together because it just makes more sense that way. Right? Okay, so yeah, I'm working with We Are Knitters Wool in Forest Green. It's a really beautiful color. It picks up very um, bluish on camera, actually, more than it actually is. It's very nice uh, emerald green, a very beautiful like jewel tone. Um, and actually, the funny thing is, the more that I'm working with this, 
the more it's reminding me of this wool from Hipknit Shop. And actually, you know what? One sec. So here's some leftover wool from Hipknit Shop. And here is the wool from We Are Knitters. Okay, so the We Are Knitters wool is definitely coming in a larger quantity uh, than the hip wool. But like the strands themselves, the strands are very uh, similar. So it's the same thickness. Honestly, it feels like the same quality. Um, it's just coming in different sizes. And I mean, they're both, I'm pretty sure this one's also a uh, Highland wool made in Peru. I think both of them, yeah. I'm wondering if it's sourced in a similar way. And they just have different colorways, that sort of thing. But yeah, so the petite wool could be a good alternative if you're having those issues, like I was mentioning at the very beginning with getting um, hip wool. Although the colorways are different, so I guess that's really what uh, distinguishes the two, that the hip wool has some really fun pops of color. The the wool, the petite wool in, from We Are Knitters also does have uh, really great colorway options. I really love their colors, um, just different ones. So also something I think about. Um, I did find that was really interesting. I was su surprised that it reminded me so much of that. But yeah, so I'm just working on this with like stockinette stitch and two by two rib with that really intense gather. Um, I'm planning on, so the patterns from Bellish, just a couple of minutes on those, the patterns from Bellish are, um, I'm assuming computer, computer generated and um, they're just, you know, they have a really great catalog of basic patterns that you can customize with like different stitches and whatever other embellishments you would like to use. I've mentioned it a little bit before in my uh, sock video and I'll uh, leave a link for that if you're interested uh, in seeing what I made with them in the past. But for this one, I'm going to do a couple of um, extras on this sweater because it's a great base. And what I'm gonna, what I'm planning on doing is making a cardigan with pockets as well as like a folded collar. So in the video that's upcoming, I will show, as I'm working on this, I will show how to uh, knit pockets on this cardigan as well as a collar as well. So look out for that video in the future. I'm very excited to be knitting this up and I hope it turns out just like I'm imagining, but it's very inspiring right now. This one is definitely taking over. Um, like I mentioned before with like the projects that I really am inspired by working on, this one is kind of my project that I'm really excited to, to work on. So I'm picking it up more often and yeah, working with it a lot. So the next project that I'm also working on is another chunky cardigan. Uh, this one is a design of mine. So something that I'm designing now uh, is another collared cardigan. This one is gonna be worked from the top down though instead of that one being worked up from the bottom up. So here's where I'm at. <laughs> it's just the collar. Um, this is three by three rib, so I'm not <laughs> knitting in two by two rib. Again, it's three by three, and I really wanted like these really thick, um, there's a lot of activity outside today. I don't know if you guys are hearing all this. Here's the collar and where it's at right now. So this is three by three rib. Um, which makes a little bit more of a even thicker uh, rib. And this is going to be like a folded collar. Can I, like that? <laughs> um, I really hope the stitch count is right. <laughs> That's always something that you gotta figure out. So this is gonna be more of a raglan style uh, cardigan. And I'm really loving how it's working right now. I had, So on Instagram, I actually posted a picture of a little swatch that I did with this wool right here. And it was in two, it was in Irish moss, Irish moss stitch. I can't find the swatch right now. I would have just put it on my bulletin board. That's normally what I do when I make a swatch um, that I'm actively working on. But as you can see, it's not there. Um, so I'll insert a picture. And um, 
I was working on it with eight millimeter needles. This wool is something that I got from Hobby Yarn. Uh, was it last year or the year before? I don't think it was, la was it last year? I can't remember, but it was for Black Friday, like their Black Friday sale. So I had ended up buying a lot of wool in this um, really nice natural colorway. I really love it. I think it's classic. Um, and I worked it up. It was recommended eight millimeters and I even swatched or I even blocked it and it was still like too loose. Maybe my tension is a little off. Um, so when I got this yarn right here, I was very excited um, because it works so perfectly together. So this is the Fuzzy Yarn by We Are Knitters. And it is so nice. And I was gifted this yarn as well as the green yarn and I'll get into that in a couple of uh, minutes. But yes, so, um, I noticed that it would be perfect together and it really is because while this has more of like a natural um, variegation, how, is, how do you really like talk about that? Because it's like, it's like a really white wool and it has just a very, very subtle um, like brush of like darker gray wool in there as well. So it must've been um, spun together with a darker Sheep, I think it's wool, wool plain. Sheepcha, sheep, sheepcha. I think that's, I don't have the label. I got rid of the label, I don't know why. But um, that's where, where I think it's from. And it's a really nice uh, wool. And paired with this, it really brings out that, um, that darker gray, even more so. And then the added flex here are fantastic, so. I'm really happy with how it's looking so far. I think it's gonna look fantastic. So I have the collar and I'm just gonna do a raglan style cardigan with Irish moss stitch, I think on the body. And then the sleeves I think are just gonna be regular stockinette. I hope it turns out the way that I'm imagining it will. It's always a gamble, but um, the yarn so far looks so great that um, whatever I decide to do, whatever it evolves into potentially, uh, I think is gonna be really lovely and I'll certainly wear it. I don't have a cardigan like this. So that is something that I'm very excited for. And I'm really inspired by collared cardigans, of course, because I've just been seeing them everywhere and I wanna make some for my own. So for my own closet and on my own, <laughs> on my own and for my own closet. So yeah, really excited about that. Not a lot of progress here because I'm gonna prioritize the other cardigan so I can get that video out for you guys. And then I will also be making hopefully a behind the scenes video about this one too, as I develop this pattern and then maybe we'll do the same process as we did with the seamless mock neck sweater. So very exciting. Um, which kind of brings me into acquisitions and specifically the ones uh, that I just kind of showed you. I'll give it a little bit more of um, attention, its own dedication, because I got this very large, very kind, generous gift from We Are Knitters to celebrate their 10 year anniversary. So, I mean, We Are Knitters is um, a company that I definitely found when I first wanted to get into knitting for the first time after so many years. Um, they offer knitting kits if you're not familiar. They um, have patterns and kits for all ranges of experience. So for me as a beginner at the time, it was definitely great for me to look into those beginner kits. And um, yeah, I've worked with their yarn in the past, really love their yarn. So when they asked if I would be interested in receiving this box and promoting this box for their uh, 10 year anniversary, I was absolutely excited to do so. And I did a lot over on Instagram. It has since passed all of the 10 year celebration that was I think about a week ago, um, but I wasn't doing a podcast. So I saved this box so that you all could see what came inside. So of course, well, first of all, Molly really loved this box too. So she was certainly trying to scratch in it. And she was also like, I found her multiple times, just like sitting in there and sleeping. 
I was trying to take photos of the box and she would just like move everything out of the way and just like curl up and sleep in there, <laughs> which is just, it's, it was cute. It was cute. Right, so here is the box and you've already seen some of the yarn that I received. So of course it was the petite wool in the forest green colorway. And then I got two skeins of the fuzzy yarn. So I got six, six skeins of the petite wool and two skeins of the fuzzy yarn. And I'm really, really happy with the color choices um, in this box. Like I mentioned, the wool, the petite wool um, in forest green is just really lovely. And the fuzzy yarn, something that I've never worked with before. Also really, really excited about how it's looking. Um, this is uh, really thick, really dense. It's a huge ball. It's 439 yards, 400 meters of like this, I guess you would call it like lace weight. Um, lace weight mohair-esque type yarn. I guess that's kind of what it's supposed to be. It's kind of supposed to be similar to a um, strand of mohair, a little bit thicker, of course, and that's how I'm using it. I'm using it kind of as a supplement to the yarn uh, that I was just talking about, the wool plain yarn uh, from Hobby. And uh, this is 40% alpaca and 41% fine, hi fine highland wool. Oh, and 19% dongle? Dongle. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I won't pretend to. So here is, again, what it looks like. Those little specks right there are just so beautiful. I really love it. Um, really happy with how it feels. It's like one of those yarns, it's actually like really soft and it won't irritate you, or at least it does not irritate me. I've worked with some mohair in the past that really like slices into my finger, just uh, irritates it a lot. So working with two strands uh, sometimes can be a bit of a challenge when you're knitting. So I'm really happy to report that this does not give that sensation. And then of course, this is just very soft and I think I've talked about it enough, but again, um, if I'll, I'll read it out to you, it's 100% wool and there's 140 meters. So not as impressive with the um, meterage, but I think I have enough for my project. And then another thing that I wanted to show you guys was the Knitspiration book. So they have like a little book that came in the, um, the package as well. And yeah, it's just full of inspiration and patterns as well. So there are a couple of patterns in here uh, that you can knit up from, I think it's supposed to be like inspiration from all around the world. So, um, there are a lot of different designs that you can look into and knit up. They have some good resources here. So if you are a beginner and you need some help with certain techniques, this is also included in the pattern and other things as well, like the types of stitches that they're working, cables um, and different, yeah, again, different techniques that you'll use throughout the pattern or throughout the book in the different patterns that they have. And yeah, so thank you very much to the team. I uh, would definitely recommend this kit because it gets you some really cool stuff if you actually got um, the fuzzy yarn and the petite wool in a matching color. That would be so nice to work up together, I think. Talking about uh, my seamless mock neck sweater. So last week, of course, you saw that I finished and uh, started the testing for that sweater. And while my testers are gonna be knitting that one up, I also want to knit another one as well because uh, normally when I make patterns, I do the first one, the first sample, and then I like to go back through the instructions myself while my testers are also doing that and uh, knit it up to make sure I'm still, I can follow it too. I'm acting as my own tester, but you know, since the pattern is kind of memorized in my head, it's of course, Great to have uh, testers for all the other sizes that are included as well. And um, since the uh, seamless mock neck sweater, the original sample is very bright and um, bold. Not something that I normally gravitate towards, but I'm really happy to have it in my closet. I love that color. I think it's so beautiful. Um, 
but I am a very neutral person at heart. I really love neutral colors. Um, those tones I just gravitate towards more and I get a lot of wear out of them. So I was thinking for my second sweater that not only would um, I go for something a little bit more neutral, but I would also try out a different type of yarn from a different brand um, that might potentially work. So the Al Pacino Merino Wool from Wool in the Gang is pretty expensive. Uh, I think it's like $15 a skein. I picked it up when it was 30% off, I wanna say uh, in the beginning of the summer when they were doing like some sort of sale on uh, more wintry type yarn. So I was really lucky to get that on a sale. And I will say that Wool and the Gang does a pretty good job doing sales every once in a while to, you know, freshen up their stock. I think that's why they do it. But that being said, I also want to explore different options. And normally <laughs> when I find other options that might be suitable for the pattern, the gauge with the size needles, it always seems to be Drops Design. So I have Drops Andy's Mix right here um, as a potential dupe for the Wool in the Gang Al Pacino Merino. Let me actually bring up so I have a leftover skein. I have three leftover skeins, actually. I wasn't sure how much I was gonna need. Um, so here they are side by side. And I will let you guys look at the, that for a second, but I wonder if you also notice what I notice. Um, they both recommend the same like gauge more or less, um, but I am noticing that the Al Pacino Merino is just a tad bit thicker then the Andes. So this is Drops Andes wool, and this is Al Pacino Merino. Let me put them next to each other, side by side. So here you see the two labels. Now, um, yeah, so I'm noticing that the strand, and maybe if I like try and like single it out, maybe you'll, but then maybe not. It's just, it's very slight. So I don't think it's really gonna have that much of an effect on the finished piece. Hold on, I'm having a hard time. Uh, I don't think it's gonna have that much of a, what am I trying to do? So this versus this, I hope it's really uh, noticeable. Is that working? <laughs> I can't tell. Um, yeah, okay, so it's a very uh, slight difference in the thickness of the yarn, but it's still there. Um, but I don't think that it's going to have that much of an effect. Um, I will swatch this up, but what's stopping me from that is I, I need you guys to give me an opinion. I know I'm asking for your opinion a lot these days, but is this way too close to my skin tone? Because I'm really worried that it's gonna make me look like a piece of toast. <laughs> It's, it's too close, right? Yeah, so I was going for neutral, but then I was also going for potentially if I wanted to make an even more clear video with instructions on how to knit the seamless mock neck sweater. I would need something that's a little bit lighter because actually what I was gravitating towards is charcoal. Um, I, really, I don't have a charcoal sweater but the last time I knit uh, and made a video with darker yarn, I got some uh, feedback, very strong feedback that you can't see anything as well as you would with lighter um, yarn. So that kind of influenced me. I was like, okay, well maybe I should do it in this, but now I'm really thinking that it's way, it's gonna wash me out. And then at the same time, I'm kind of just thinking, well, if I want a charcoal sweater, I should knit a charcoal sweater because that's what I want in my wardrobe versus this just to be able to make sure that everything is visible while I think that's very valuable. Um, since it came in and is not exactly like what I'm in love with, um, I think I'm gonna return it. I think I can in the next couple of days. I still have the ability to return this if I want to. And I think I will. But I'll keep this yarn because this yarn, I went on a little tangent, but this was $15, $15 a skein uh, normally priced. So if you get it on sale, you're lucky, uh, 15 regularly. This is five euros per skein. 
And they both have, if I'm not mistaken, the same qual quantity. No, okay. So this is 100 gram. This this one is 100 grams and 90 meters. This one is 100 grams and 100 meters. So okay, 10 meter difference. Um, something to keep in mind. But uh, yeah, they pretty much look the same. There's another one that I would recommend, which is Katia Concept. Not Concept. I think it's Katia Big Merino. The reason I didn't choose it is because it has, it's mixed with um, acrylic yarn and I just prefer not to knit with acrylic yarn and I prefer to knit with um, natural yarn. So this is 100% merino. No, no it's not. This is a this is 65% wool and 35% alpaca and this is 60% merino and 40% baby alpaca. You were asking me any other kind of yarn that's recommended. This is another yarn that I would potentially recommend. I'll have more thoughts on it when I actually knit up the second sample of the sweater. But here's where I'm thinking right now, this is a really good one for almost a third of the price. So um, it can also be a very affordable sweater as well. That was a long uh, tangent on these two yarns, who knew? Uh, yeah, so let me know, do you think I should exchange it? I, I'm kind of leaning towards a certain way. If not charcoal, I'll get a darker color. Um, maybe you guys can uh, support my decision. <laughs> Another thing that I've got that's very exciting that I kind of forgot that I was gonna get, <laughs> which I know that we all have these things and I try my best to, we are not machines. I think that's what we need to remember. So, you know, buying yarn is its own hobby. Getting yarn is its own hobby, uh, but we are not machines. So we can't be down on ourselves if we can't knit as much as we can somehow buy because buying yarn is much easier than it is to actually knit the piece because knitting the piece takes time. Um, that being said, I think I'm going to put a stop <laughs> on purchasing yarn. Uh, now because I see that I have just way too much compared to what I can actually get done. But that being said, I have a very exciting package <laughs> of yarn. And this one was highly, highly, highly anticipated by me because I actually purchased it, I wanna say in the beginning of August, um, if not late July, I think it was more August though. So this yarn is coming all the way from Japan from Big Little Yarn Co, Melanie in Big Little Yarn Co. If you're not already familiar with her, I would highly recommend you go check out her channel. She sometimes posts knitting podcasts and I love everything that she makes. She is also an indie dyer who creates really lovely colorways and really fun like collections of skeins. And I got my hands on some in her last update in August. Um, and it finally arrived all the way from Japan. I'm so excited. So first of all, um, she sent like this little thank you card. I know she sends it to everybody, but there's a little thank you card. <laughs> and then uh, it's signed in the back, really sweet. Um, and this is a picture of the, all of the colors that were in the range for that collection. Um, and I was so impressed with this collection. That's why I absolutely had to invest in some of this yarn because um, I think I mentioned a couple of uh, podcasts ago, if not the last one, that I am really starting to get more into variegated yarn. I'm really trying to uh, branch out and do more indie dyed uh, yarn, do projects with some indie dyed yarn as well, which is why I got that Woolly Mammoth Co. sock going. And the other indie dyer that I just has my heart is Big Little Yarn Co. So here are the skeins that I got. Ah, oh, they are beautiful. They're so beautiful. Look at these colors, you guys. They are so beautiful. Um, so this collection, uh, forgive me because I don't remember what it was called, the collection, but it was inspired by um, Summer in Japan. I wanted very much and had a trip planned with my fiance in March, 2020 to go to Japan. 
So um, as you can imagine, we were not able to go on that trip. So I'm very happy to have these skeins in my life <laughs> because it makes me feel a little bit like I got to experience Japan in some form. Um, so look at these like little tags. And then it tells you the details. I love the handwritten aspect. I feel like everything that she does is very intentional and very, um, just very sweet. So I got two different bases to try out. So this is a DK weight yarn. And um, it is 100% superwash merino DK weight. And one uh, skein is 225 meters. It's a four ply and it's hand, di hand dyed. Natsuzora. Natsuzora? Please forgive me, I'm so sorry. Uh, so here, this is just the most beautiful shade of blue. I have knit in a shade similar to this. So when I saw this, I absolutely needed to grab it. I think I can manage to get like a short sleeve, like a uh, turtleneck maybe out of this uh, yarn. That's what I'm envisioning for this one. Really love this beautiful blue color. And then these two right here. Um, so Matsuri, Matsuri is the paper lanterns uh, inspired one. Oh no, whoops. Matsuri is not paper lantern inspired. <laughs> I think it's supposed to be like a festival. Um, you can go to her video and she'll explain all of this, but unfortunately I think this was a one-time thing. So you might not be able to get your hands on these colorways. This one is Paper Lantern. <laughs> and it's really lovely. I wish I knew what I was gonna use these for, um, but they're just really pretty. Uh, yeah, I definitely got these without thinking necessarily of a project. I just knew that I really loved the color. They were very inspiring. So I'm going to dream something up with them and all three of them together are really lovely. I wouldn't necessarily knit with them together because this is a different weight anyway, but I don't know, I'll maybe just hold on to them also and see if there's anything else that I can pair them with. Um, maybe find like a nice rust color for this one. And then, I mean, I could potentially knit something in just one skein. It is, like I said, 400 meters, so did I say that already? It is 400 meters, so I could potentially get something out of this one skein. Um, this one, I don't know what I would, <sighs> they're just so beautiful. So yes, really, really excited about these. Go check out Melanie um, at Big Little Yarn Co. She's both there on the web and on Instagram and on YouTube. So I would really highly recommend you check out her channel for some really beautiful um, knitting colors and uh, I'm very excited about this wool right here. It's so pretty. Um, yeah, let's move on. <laughs> it's one of those things like if you're you're interested in making a project, but you're not 100% sure if you're gonna have time for it. Um, that's kind of what this is. So I have four skeins of Knitting for Olive silk mohair and the, the tags are kind of coming off. So hold on, like this. Very, very pretty in this ivory color, this ivory shade, which is really lovely. Very soft. Um, I've heard all about, and I'm sure you have too, all about Knitting for Olive and just how luxurious their yarn is. And I see this and I agree 100%. So far, first impressions is that this is very, very soft, very silky, and I can't wait to work with it. So this is in ivory and um, yeah, the plan. What is the plan with this? Uh, actually, if you didn't know, I'm engaged to get married and hopefully <laughs> we will be able to get married very soon. Um, we'll have like a civil wedding actually, which is, um, required actually in Brussels, we need to have the civil wedding before you can have like a, you need to have like your official civil wedding at the courthouse. And then 
most couples go afterwards and have like a big celebration. But like considering that I'm far away from friends and family, we're just gonna have the civil wedding first and then when hopefully things get a little bit better and more easy to plan uh, with travel and everything like that, we'll be able to have a bigger celebration. But that being said, I'm planning on having a courthouse wedding. So I want to make something very special um, that I can wear with my wedding dress at the courthouse. So that's where this comes in. I was thinking I was gonna make like a little shrug. So on Pinterest, I've been scrolling through trying to fit, get inspiration. Like what do you wear at a courthouse wedding? Obviously it's not gonna be like that big ball gown. It's gonna be something a little bit more minimal, at least on my preference. Um, something a little bit vintage inspired too. Maybe I'll embrace a little bit how uh, that might be for um, like a courthouse, like, you know, like a fifties, maybe not big skirt and all kind of thing, but uh, you know, clean lines, um, very simple dress, small bouquet. And on top of that, since it's going to probably be pretty cold outside, a little shrug. And that's what this yarn is for. I don't have like a pattern in mind at the moment. Um, I think it's gonna be very simple, just like a stockinette, whatever I can kind of whip up quickly, <laughs> I hate to say, um, because uh, it would just be something that I wanna just have kind of over my shoulders, um, maybe have a tie in the front. So it's gonna be kind of like a shawl. Either it's gonna be a shrug with like shorter sleeves, like quarter length sleeves, or it's going to be a shawl that I can kind of just tie around my uh, shoulders. So that's what I have this for. I'm not 100% sure if this is gonna be enough. It is 25 grams, which is 225 meters. I think that should be fine. And I was gonna knit with a little bit thicker needles so that it has, you know, just a little bit of a um, larger stitch, uh, which could look really like airy and nice and fluffy. And um, that's really all I can think about. I haven't really given it much thought because I've been busy with other designs in my head and I'm not 100% sure when we'll be able to uh, make it to the courthouse. At the, at the moment, we have still some paperwork that we need to do. So until I have more of a deadline, this isn't going to be made into anything yet. So it's kind of just been sitting in a little paper bag that it came in um, and hopefully very soon I can get started on that project and not get stressed out by it because I waited so long <laughs> to actually make it. I thought it would be nice during that very special day to have something that's handmade by me. So um, yeah, just to yeah make the day even more special. So that is what the plan is for this yarn. We'll see how it turns out. Um, so fingers crossed that everything works out for that and that uh, I don't knit my wrists off trying to get to the deadline, but I'm sure it'll be just fine. So I'm very excited for that. Uh, the last thing, I know that this is already very long, but the last thing that I wanted to share is something knitting related, but not knitting related. <laughs> um, something that I've been working on behind the scenes and I did a little sneak peek on Instagram. One of the things that I love about making my own clothes is that you can also customize it and make it feel as professional as possible with labels. Like all of my sweaters that, I'm, that I make, I eventually stitch in a label to them. The same thing goes with my sewing uh, projects as well. I just like adding that extra little embellishment. Um, I used to have, or I still have, all of my, I have a whole range of labels like these right here that I've gotten from other companies. And then I actually ordered from Etsy these labels that I use, these well-loved labels. And when I got these, I was kind of disappointed the way that they turned out because they um, are too small and then they don't have like the fold that makes it easy to, to stitch them on. But I do really like the way that they look and I have stitched a couple of these into one of, a couple of my finished objects. I, I've been redesigning or designing other types of labels that um, potentially I can share with all of you as well. So that brings in these two labels here um, so these are some woven labels. The hot, these are much higher quality than the other labels I just showed you. And I'm really excited about them because they're just like super cute little, um, things that you can stitch in. And I feel like it's not just 
about Well of Knits. It's more about something that you all could also enjoy. So I'm playing with the idea of adding these to my shop. And here's one. So this has the make what you love uh, slogan on it. I thought it was really cute. Just like it's a folded label. So it's kind of like one of those tags that you can, uh, that you see in your sweaters or in your t-shirts or anything like that. And you can stitch them on. And it would also work for sewing if you're interested in sewing uh, tags as well, because it's not about knitting. And then this one I thought was really cute is totally worth it because I bet you can also relate to that after knitting something up, even though sometimes it can be a pain, it's totally worth it. So um, these are two little designs that I'm testing out currently, and I plan on adding them to the shop soon. I just need to think about uh, logistics and how I'm going to package and send these um, because I currently don't have like any stationery or anything like that that I can use to, um, hold these guys. So yes, I would sell them in like a little bit of a bundle. So you could get like six of these for a set price, six of these for a set price. And maybe I'll even play with combining the two so you could get three and three. Um, so that's something that I've just been working on behind the scenes that's knitting related, crafting related, but not quite uh, knitting and crafting. So I really hope that you like them too. Let me know what you think of them because I'm personally really excited about how they turned out. I think the quality is much higher than um, this one that I had printed before. I do want to revisit the Well Loved because I think that this could be, this would be really nice to have with um, the logo on it. Um, but the, the type of material that it's used, I am not very happy with it. So these are big, thick woven labels that I think would be a really great finishing touch to just about any project. And I think they're just really fun and colorful. And I would love to make even more in the future. So like I said, these are just a test. I wanna see if you guys are interested in them and I'll add them to the shop very soon, if so. And uh, yeah, otherwise I'm just gonna be able to stitch all of these into my own clothes and that will just elevate them a little bit more and make me feel like I'm wearing something that's professionally made, but at the same time being proud that I made it myself. So, oh, <laughs> wow, my throat hurts. <laughs> I feel like I've been talking for a really long time I think I definitely have been talking for a really long time. I had a lot to share with you guys and I didn't even realize it really. I was kind of thinking just before this episode that, wow, I really hope I have something to share <laughs> because all I could really think of was, oh, I finished the seamless mock neck sweater, but did I really, do I have anything else? But I did. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, I always love sharing prod. I have been talking too long. I think I really need to just stop talking. But let me close this out. I am so happy that you guys take your time out of your day to sit down, knit, chat with me. Um, it really means the world to me. I love making videos like this. I love just making videos on YouTube in general. And I'm just so thankful for this community and you all just being here and sharing your love for knitting and DIY with me. It is such a treat. So thank you for listening to me. I need to go have a cup of tea and I need to relax because my voice is about to lose it. So thank you guys so much for being here. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more knitting and DIY content like this. Um, and I will see you guys next week. Until then, bye.